Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and today I'm going to show you how to change the battery in your Philips Norelco Ultimate Body Groomer, model number BG2030. I've owned this body groomer for almost 15 years, but the battery no longer holds a charge, even after sitting in the charging base overnight, and I can't get it to turn on anymore. So it looks like I'm going to have to replace the rechargeable batteries inside. First, we'll remove the shaver head attachment by twisting it counterclockwise and pulling it off. On the back at the bottom, you can see the charging contacts are still in really good shape. At the front of the back plate, above the attachment point, you can see a small notch, and I'm just going to very gently slide a metal spudger into this slot. You can also use a small flathead screwdriver. There's a small catch here too that you have to go around. I can feel there's adhesive holding the back on, but once you get more of the plate unglued, it gets a lot easier. Again, there's a catch on this side too and you can see all the double-sided tape that was used to hold it down. Now that the back plate is off, we can remove the two silver side grips by simply sliding them up. Behind each of these, you'll find a small metal crimp that holds the top and bottom pieces together. Use your spudger or screwdriver to gently slide it upward to remove it without bending it. It'll look like a big staple once removed. Then do this again on the other side. Now you can pull the upper half away from the lower half, and they should separate. If it's tight, you can use your tool to gently separate these two pieces. Inside, the circuit board and motor will likely detach with the upper part of the housing. Just pull on the board lightly, and you should be able to remove it from the upper shell. These are the factory original batteries. It's a pair of nickel metal hydride AAA flat top batteries that are linked in series with solder tabs. On the bottom, you can see that the batteries are soldered in place here. So we will have to remove that solder to change the batteries. The battery compartment is also covered by the LED module, so we'll need to remove that first. Using a small Phillips screwdriver, remove the screw below the power button and take off the plastic diffuser. Once removed, you should be able to just lift the PCB and move it to the side. To remove the batteries, you can try using a soldering iron and solder wick to take off the solder on the battery tabs. Be careful though, because the contacts are really close to the plastic housing, which will melt if the iron tip touches it. You also don't want to keep the tip on the battery tab for too long, as overheating the batteries, even if depleted, can be dangerous. If you're having trouble removing the solder from the wires, you can simply snip the wire at the tip, which I'm going to do now. If you haven't fully removed the wires from the tabs, you can go ahead and bend those tabs up and snip the tips off. On the other side, the batteries are adhered in the bay using double-sided tape, so you can gently pry and lift them up. Here are the two tabs that I snipped the tips off of. That's the double-sided tape on the bottom, and at the other end, there's a soldered tab connecting them in series. Since there weren't any spec markings on the original batteries, I bought these AAA 1000 milliamp hour 1.2 volt batteries that came pre-soldered in series with tabs at one end. The one difference on these though is that the side with the tabs has the opposite polarity as the originals. The left one on the original is the positive end, while my replacement battery pack is the negative end. Similarly on the right side, the originals was negative, and on the new one it is positive. So that means when I go to put these back, I'm going to have to switch the position of the wire leads. If you want to avoid this, make sure you get a set of batteries with tabs that have the positive pull on the left and negative on the right when the tabs are facing you. So I'm going to put the new battery pack into the bay and make sure the tabs go through the holes at the end. And now, because the battery pack is reversed, I'll have to attach the wires on the opposite sides like so. Just make sure you attach the black wire to the negative terminal's soldering tab and the red wire to the positive terminal's soldering tab. First, I'll pre-tin the tips of the wires, and you can see that I've taped the batteries in place so that they don't fall out while I'm working on them. Now, pre-tin the soldering tabs as well, which on these new batteries are super thin. When soldering to battery tabs, 
always start with the red wire on the positive terminal. Make sure you melt the solder on both the tab and the wire, and hold it there until it solidifies. Then check to make sure the connection is solid. Next, solder the black wire to the negative terminal's tab. Alright, so it doesn't look super pretty, but that should be it. Let's flip it over and give it a test. And there you go, it's powered on. So now we just need to clean it up a little bit and reassemble. Since I had to swap the position of the wires for this battery pack, I'm going to add a few small pieces of electrical tape to cover and insulate any metal that the crossed leads might come into contact with to avoid an accidental short. I'm just going to cover anything underneath the wires, as well as the leads and solder tabs. If you use a replacement battery pack with the same orientation as the originals, you can skip this step. Now, replace the LED PCB over the small post just below the power button. Reinstall the diffuser, and add back the screw in the middle. Just be sure not to over tighten the screw, as the diffuser could crack. Now place the bottom of the motor assembly into the lower half of the casing, with the power button and LED facing the same direction as the logo, and slip the top half of the casing over the motor, then press both halves together firmly. Next, slide the crimp staples into the slots on the sides to hold both halves together. Then slide the silver side covers back on. These have a left and right, and will only attach to their respective sides. Now you can replace the back cover, making sure to snap in the catches, and press firmly all over to reapply the double-sided tape. And that should be it! Let's test it again with the trimmer attachment, just to be sure. And it seems to be running fine, but the red LED has come on, indicating it needs to be charged. So I'm going to set it in the base and let it charge fully for at least 8 to 10 hours before using it for the first time. The green light has come on, so hopefully that means it's charging. The next day the green light has gone off, so that should mean it is fully charged. Let's run it again. And no red light this time. Motor sounds strong, and it's not shutting off right away. So now, finally, I'll be able to have a trim and not have to worry about the battery going out in the middle of it. I hope you enjoyed this repair video. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put links to the repair parts in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and happy grooming!